Oh my gosh, look who's here. We're gonna go in now, okay. Larry. So happy to have you. <laughs> Everyone's getting worried you weren't gonna make it. So what I do, just come up to the mic or something? Yeah, step up. Hi, check, welcome. Check, one, one. Thank you. Thank How are you nice doing? Here. Doing good. And so, How was Glastonbury? It was great. Yeah? Yeah, super hot on Saturday. Yeah? Super cold at night. <laughs> yeah? What Play was in music. the set? Play of, sorry? What was in the set? Um, wow. Because <laughs> I saw you in Dimensions. <laughs> you played some gospel boogie track that I've never heard before or since. What was that? I don't know. Um, it was about five tracks in. Oh, well, I'm pretty terrible at that, so I... That was my have first to look question. at my own track list. Do you tweak list. it a lot, the track list, for the live uh, show? Yeah, yeah, it's probably changed about 13, 14 times since we <sighs> did that first Dimension show. Yeah, yeah. okay, okay. Where should we start? Wherever you want to. Born in 1960 in Chicago, mm -hmm. then what happened? I grew up, <laughs> grew up around a lot of music, around um, uh, family members that all play piano and things like that right. so we were kind of like my uncle was saying to me that we were raised to be musicians you know so i guess we just i just followed suit with that you know the, the natural flow of what was going on with our family yeah and then flowing right into what was going on in community with the whole house music thing but i mean what were you playing at home as a child what was i playing at home um like how easy did it get to step from that world into the club world what was that process like? Um, that was just something that just happened on its own. So I yeah. can't say I did anything specific. I just kind of was in the right town at the right time with the right kind of a thing going on. And I was able to kind of contribute something to it. Yeah. Do you remember the early records you heard which, which blew your mind? Set a yeah. kind of standard yeah. for you? Well, the ones that kind of maybe not blown my mind, but kind of expanded my confidence when um, Jamie Principles, Your Love came out, Jesse Saunders, On and On came out. Yeah. It was a physical record. We were hearing it off tape prior to that, along with a host of other things that um, Frankie and Ron Hardy and some of the other guys around town were playing. So it just made things feel closer to you. It gave you some confidence and some hope. Yeah. And it energized everybody, I think. Those were big tracks worldwide, mm -hmm. quite quick, were right? They, they didn't stay. Huh? I don't think they stayed that but yeah, I think the whole thing did kind of progress very rapidly. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know anything about the sales figures or anything. I just but knew they were very popular. True or yeah. false? You don't really go clubbing. I will show up. Yeah. But I've always kind of I started working when I was fifteen. Yeah. So I bypassed the, the typical teenage life where you're sneaking into clubs, you're doing you know all those kind of things. I was already at work. Yeah. So I was you know working when the warehouse and the club. Um, and music box, all those things were around. I was on night shift Ooh. at that time, which complicated everything. Yeah. Just working full time, plus I was in a band. Yeah. So there's only so many hours in a day, so you just couldn't, you know, do everything. Yeah. Tell me about um, the equipment that you first started on, because this sound, it's a very Larry sound, the space, the dynamics. <laughs> um, the, well, I can't say I really even knew anything about what I was doing. I just knew I was interested in the technology at that time that was showing up, the synthesizers, and I ended up buying a Roland Jupiter 6, I think it was, and that's what you're hearing uh, here on uh, Can You Feel It? It's pretty much all Jupiter 6 parts with my uh, crazy, uh, wacky scientist recording done on two cassette decks going back and forth to do the passes to add the different elements. Really? Yeah, yeah, you had to use your ingenuity back before the days when everything was on your laptop. So you just had a knack for sound design, for engineering, you feel? Um, well, maybe it was something I was around because my dad was into components and his, his brothers and everything ah. were into components. And we were kind of like the first household on our street to have three-way speakers and all those kind of landmarks. So, yeah, I was around a lot of music and musicians. Again. So you did have a special little Larry 3000 rack. <laughs> well, yeah, it probably wouldn't be impressive if I had a picture, but, you know, it was my little modest thing, and you, you, you work with what you have, you know? Yeah. You know, it, makes you, it makes you work your brain, you know? So your records, they, they have such an intensity to them, such a world in each record. Mm -hmm. I guess, were you aware of that, or were you just making track, club tracks? I'm kind of more, you know, 60s child, kind of more following the flow of what's going on around you and I can't with music I was kind of more letting the sounds kind of direct what I would do 
kind of expressively with them. So yeah. it wasn't me trying to. I always get that with, with journalists, with them saying, "What were you? What were you? What were you?" No, no it's the kind of more the reverse of that. Is more meditative, where I'm not thinking. I'm just kind of feeling really from the the sounds that I'm utilizing. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And actually, a buddy of mine named this track, and it's just odd that he named it "Can You Feel It." So it's uh, pretty consistent with this whole feel concept, which is hard to kind of express in words sometimes. Yeah. Well, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I mean, how many sounds are in this record? I mean, there's not many. Not, not a lot. It's very, You're very, very sparse. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, you you had to be when you just don't have that much to work with far as tools you're you're restricted so you have to express it within the, the confines of what you have to work with yeah mm. let's play one more okay <laughs> larry heard joins us Now this one, Larry, this is insane, this one. You ad-lib this from top to bottom. Oh, am I need to be up here? Yeah, yeah you need to be When up. I first got to Memphis, I kind of had some things kind of kind of stored away out of my archives, which became Dance 2000, part one and part two. So this is my actual first recording in Memphis. The words were just kind of ad-libbed as the track was rolling and all that kind of thing, yeah. I, I come from improvisation, though. I was yeah. dealing with uh, a lot of uh, prog rock uh, cover bands that I was in and uh, jazz fusion. So I guess I just got accustomed to the liberty of just kind of improvising. But some of those records seem to noodle out. You don't noodle out. You keep it... Sh is it tough to keep it tight? You know, because the composition could go off. Uh, yeah, be very contained, very yeah, efficient, Maybe it very feels elegant. like a, a 30 minute or 50 minute thing, like <laughs> E2, E4, probably. Yeah. But this is more a little more brief, so yeah, you kept kept it condensed. Where is it, it doesn't tough? Kind of is it tough to keep roll it off the rails? Um, well, it's tough to kind of more tough to iron out the idea as you're working on it because it it can derail. Yeah. While you're in the middle of doing something, so you just try to again by feel. Is this complete or do I need to do more to it? You know? Yeah. Most people, you know, they, they suffer from uh, self-doubt, you know, when they're mm -hmm. questioning themselves, yeah. wondering if they're good enough, you know. Yeah. All these things go through my mind at any one time. But you're Larry Hurd. Oh, that doesn't mean anything. I'm just <laughs> as human as anybody else. You have, really? You, know, you don't know. I mean, I have, um, I guess, as a kid, I started buying records at 10 years old. Yeah. So it gives you a little bit of insight into kind of, yeah, you know something about what makes people buy. Because everybody wants them, but they don't want to buy them. Okay. So that's what it is. I was buying, so it was a, it's a different level of interest when you, you starve yourself from having your lunch at school to buy a 45. Yeah. And you feel you could get right in there? Well, I pretty much was already in once I discovered... <laughs> what was going on around me. It was just a, 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 just intersecting at the same places because I come from the um, live music scene yeah, and the jazz and rock and yeah. reggae kind of a yeah. movement there. And I just kind of, of course, I knew about the house music and all the, the Hot Mix 5 and all that stuff. Yeah. Going back to even disco, it was from radio, of course. Yeah. But I kind of, because of my work schedule, I wasn't really able to participate in the nightlife kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, we skipped over the music box. Did you go and see Ron Hardy? Um, I never saw him at the music box. I saw him at this place called Den One, which is where he played before the music box. Right. And I just kind of uh, stumbled in there, actually, with some friends. And, you know, we're just, you know, kind of enjoying ourselves, having a night out. And... After a while, I finally say, well, who's playing this music? Yeah. Because he was way up in the balcony. It wasn't yeah. one of these kind of, hey, look at me, look at me. I'm Ron Hardy. Here I am. Yeah. Uh, he was just up there playing the music. I just, I could see the top of someone's head. And I said, well, who is this playing? He said, well, that's Ron Hardy. He said, oh, this is Ron Hardy. I've been hearing his and name. And he was, he was going. And I guess it's, uh, yeah. He was going wide back then with the selection. He, he, was he going what? Wide. Because, you know, in the music box, his mix is enough for, for going right through, you know, European stuff. 
rock? Yeah, he's kind of all over the place, and that's what kind of just really got my attention. It yeah. made me ask who is this playing yeah. the music because, well, if you ask about who's playing the music, obviously they're doing a good job. Did you go and or, pass or him? you're ready to leave one or the other? You know, so. Did you pass him a track? No, I didn't have any tracks to pass him. I wasn't there on business. We were just no. hanging out. Okay, you weren't like that. Yeah. No. no, you don't want to be kind of one of these Playing people. Playing it very who's modest. A nuisance. Well, you don't want to be a nuisance to people where they get sick of seeing you coming around because yeah, they know you only want something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but you know, it's the only people that are nuisance are the ones that don't, don't have something to give. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I was lucky someone else volunteered to take mine. To Frankie Knuckles and Ron Hardy, and you, they did me a little favor. Yeah. yeah. Trying to listen to the outro of this. You just did this thing with the uh, Barry White Orchestra, Love Unlimited. Yeah, yeah. We did uh, Somebody's Gonna Off the Man from the uh, Together Brothers soundtrack. Oh, that's an amazing record. Yeah. Renee and Viv found that for me were you buying um i brought it with me actually okay because were you were you picking up um barry white stuff when you're a kid because you um, and him have I probably quite... got um what was that first record he came out with <laughs> what was that uh i can't remember the title of it but i guess maybe his first a lot of them sound at like that, that time i was maybe like 13 yeah so a 13 year old doesn't really have money to buy albums so it was more of me getting 45s at that time. I probably graduated to albums when I started working better jobs, maybe like 15, 16 yeah. years old. You know? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. but you must have you must have felt some inspiration from him because music, he's he's incredible. The drum, the hardest drums, very sparse. He almost abstracts mm -hmm. in some of these tracks. Just loops, little fills, very simple but mm -hmm. very elegant. Yeah. And yeah. hard as hell. Yeah, Those I think I'm pretty, pretty much drawing inspiration from everything I yeah. was hearing. Again, with family members playing and two brothers playing guitar, you were kind of, you know, in no way you can ignore music around you with, you know, that much kind of going on. Yeah. Your drums and percussion are always, always beautiful. Oh, thank you, man. Well, I guess that's my natural instrument, which it took me numerous years to kind of discover that I could play the drums. I knew I liked the drums, right. but I didn't know I could play them until I actually bought a set. I made a bluff when someone was um, setting up a band and told them I could play the drums, so I had to disappear and hide out and buy a set and practice yeah. before I ran into this guy again. You know, so. so you were programming it all up until then? Sorry? You were programming all the drums up until you bought the kit when you were making the records? Uh, no, this would be before. Records. Oh, really? Before? Yeah, this would be 70s, yeah. Oh, okay. Like I started playing in 77 as far as drums. Yeah. So I you played guitar for a little while, then bass, and then switched to drums. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then when and you make a track like this, this is live drums? No. This is later. <laughs> this is like <laughs> seven, eight years down the line now where, you know, the drum machines are starting to yeah, show exa up. Exactly. We can afford, you know, because some of them were just too expensive. You know. Oh, yeah. What happened on this day? How were you feeling when you made this one? I couldn't even tell you. Oh. I probably was just more trying to, again, you're just having fun, yeah. kind of expressing yourself, which I kind of wasn't able to do from the drum kit. Yeah. I was able to kind of, you know, play the rhythmic part, but as far as expressing a creative idea, you know, I was kind of left out of that. So I was just having fun. It was a release, you know, just having a good time. Big release. Technology, yeah. The incredible record. Yeah. Ah, thank and you. it's the, the expanse of your sound. You know, so from that dimension set I mm -hmm. caught, uh -huh. you know, you go, can go from this to uh, the gospel thing to a beautiful song, mm -hmm. you know, back to the banger, back to some gherkin jerks. Uh -huh. yeah. I felt like you were holding back. If you went, you know, out <laughs> of safety. Well, I think the things the people, off people haven't you. heard, the smooth jazz, they hadn't heard the hip hop, they hadn't heard the R&B stuff. I mean, musicians play music. Yeah. And not just one style, just because that's no. where people get comfortable with one. But, you know, yeah, I'm kind of... Uh, creative people get restless. Yes. They can't stay in the same place, in the same space, you know. No. You have to kind of explore a little bit and have an adventure. <laughs>
you aware that you leveled up the game with almost every release? Uh, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's just just something that happened. No. Nothing deliberate. Really? Uh, yeah. I mean, you can't really monitor what the whole planet is doing. No. You just kind of you you're in your own kind of isolated space a lot of times, as you know. Studios tend to be, yeah, where they kind of disconnected from the outside of the world. So. You didn't have any it feedback from DJ friends who were like, oh, my God, it destroyed the place last night. Um, Come and witness. I would more have the ones who kind of were upset that I put five bars in or 13 <laughs> bars in or something <laughs> like that, something unorthodox. But, yeah. but it, they never said they didn't like it. It just, says it, it just threw them off. <laughs> well, you've got to go with the feel, haven't you? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what, the, that's the Quincy Jones school of thinking. He said, where it feels good, yeah. that's where it is good. Was it a struggle? I guess, I mean, with your labels, you were, you had free. You didn't have label problems like do another do another one of these tracks, do another. No, then the productivity would have went way, way, way down because I would have been more annoyed that someone who can't come in the studio and do what I do is trying to tell me how to do it. Yeah. If you can't do it, be quiet. So you never, because I imagine like with your songwriting skills, you would have got asked to kind of become a, a writer for other artists or anything. Uh, yeah, there were things that kind of came around, but most of the time you kind of run into this, even with kind of major label artists like say Shaka Khan's and Sade's and Phyllis Hyman's where people were like, well, we know this guy, but isn't it house music? So again, in their minds, it's still just restricted right. to one genre, one kind of flavor. Did of it music. make you sad a little bit, um, or do you just think I'm? It was just, just do more of a reality thing. check. Just reality check. That's all. I mean, you just can't how... let everything get you sad because you'll be sad all the time. No, just yeah. how frustrating the world can be sometimes. Quite tunnel. Yeah, yeah. You but... know, for a brain like yours, where you see wide. When you constantly, you know, people maybe say, "No, no, less of that." No. Yeah, yeah. You I guess, but no, the my... world. Really expect the whole world to just change for me, though. <laughs> and I had, you know, actually I had a couple of buddies where they were really literally on suicide watch oh. because they were so distraught that the world wasn't conforming to what they thought it should do. Their vision, so, so, yeah. So, yeah, you kind of set yourself up for frustration when you think you're going to change the world yeah. as opposed to let me flow along with it until we get somewhere where I can do something. Yeah. I change the flow, not change the whole world would be change the flow of something get you know? your niche yeah find where you fit in yeah. but did you have it also you know when you're discussing your ideas with a friend they say you can't do that and then you say oh yeah well watch this watch i don't machine. think that really happened because i was always doing the ideas just, before just, they heard them yeah that's quite key, and it's right? like, that's what ends up being annoying for me again the kind of the armchair quarterback the backseat driver again if yeah. you can't jump in and help you just need to be quiet or not really be on site yeah, and that's how it works for me best to just be alone. Do you find you have to you have to protect your uh, creative sort of impulse a lot by staying um, in the no, studio? No, I don't have to. Be, I don't have to because I'm always alone doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so even when I was working with Robert, as far as uh, doing the tracks, yeah, I would be by on my own doing oh, right. that. Okay. And at one point in time, he lived right across the hall from me in this building, so he would hear something through the wall, yeah. and he would come tapping on the door with his. A bag of song lyrics, and that was just, a great partnership. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. And again, something that we didn't, we couldn't have orchestrated. No, it just happened. On How its did own. you meet? I met him at a party. He was DJing. Yeah, and he happened to play "Mystery of Love," and I th went up to thank him for playing it. And he told me he wrote lyrics and he sang. Wow. I said, "Well, let's, yeah, let's get together sometime." We exchanged numbers, and that was the beginning of it. Yeah. Because it is that kind of thing. If you if you follow your path strongly enough, it kind of you synchronize with other types that yeah, it, also again do that it. hippie so the, thing of paying yeah. attention to what's happening, what's happening, and get involved as opposed to I'm trying to again alter the whole world. Yeah, it's like no, let me just get right here where something's going on that I can relate to. Yeah, and we start flowing, and as we go, we'll find our our next fork in the road where we make whatever decision we have to make there. Yeah. Cosmic connections get made. Yeah. So you were you were still working though, or you were in the studio and getting money from the records and and sort of living like that, or were you were you still having to work jobs while you were putting I was working, out all these uh, classics? I left my job in '87, so right. the first record came out in '85, uh, Mystery, yeah. So, so I gave it two two it. years to kind of uh, 
for something to kind of settle into place and stabilize a little bit, even though it never actually stabilizes. Yeah. It's kind of all over the place, but, you know, I, but I had some pension money built up, you know, from my job. I say, okay, let me draw that out <laughs> just in case and kind of live off of that for a while until something actually stabilizes, you know, with the music. You know. It was quite a moment when you, you start to, to, you know, survive financially off your own brain, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of one of those things. I mean, it's not uh, the, the creative and entertainment world is not really kind of a... For the faint of heart, I would say, you got to yeah. have a little bravery and a sense of adventure, you know, and, you know, and be willing to take risks. Yeah. You know, and so Safety I is was death. fortunate that, you know, my gamble, you know, somewhat. Well, I'm off, glad you, you know. took it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you ever you met too. someone that does not like your music? <laughs> well, I'm sure there's, uh, I mean, nothing can appeal to How everybody. can anyone? So there's, there's no probably, one in the world that knows your music. There's probably people around who are like, I, I don't no, get it. No, they haven't heard it. They probably don't get it. They haven't heard it. I don't think yeah. they've heard it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's no way. Yeah. Isn't that an amazing thing? Mm -hmm. the, the, you know, just the amount of messages I've got. Mm -hmm. Gino says hi, actually. He brought you to Italy. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's up, Gino? <laughs> the best. Everybody just okay. says the best. Yeah. This is quite a, a thing to live with. Uh, what? So you. My, yes, oh, okay. you. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, if they said the worst, yeah, I'd be worried about that. But. <laughs> uh. Anything you'd like to hear next? Um, nothing I can think of at the moment. I'll, we'll kind of follow I've your flow. I've just been playing my, the very special ones to me. Okay. I hope that's okay. Yeah, no problem. Renee's here from Black Market. He's, he's gone off. Yep, yep. But uh, you formed an, uh, a partnership. Somewhere. He put out this record, which is amazing as well. I'll just press play. Was this like a little resurgence era when you... How did you meet Renee? Did you meet at the garage? Uh, no. no. Um, we met in Chicago. I think he, oh. he was in town um, doing some business stuff, getting some music. For, for the black market label, you know. Yeah. And I guess at some point someone directed him around to me and you know, that's where we met. I think eight, maybe that same year, 87, 88. Like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we did the Gallimorphy Gallery release yeah. for him, yeah. Well, we haven't played any Gherkin jokes yet. Uh, <laughs> we got time. We got time. What was that alter ego about? Uh, just a wacky, mad scientist kind of an experiment thing. Amazing. It's pretty much what all of them were, you know, in essence at the beginning stages of the whole, the whole uh, music form was pretty much an experiment for everyone involved. So we kind of feeling our way through in uncharted territory. You missed that freedom back then when you didn't really know what you were doing and everything was a Well, a I risk. still don't know what I'm doing. Right? <laughs> so you still kind of, I still kind of just follow my instincts, but, you know. I speak to them. Um, hope, hope, hope someone can relate to what it is you're doing. Yeah. Because yeah. it's the intention, really, isn't it? In amongst mm -hmm. the yeah. record. Yeah. You, yeah. You hope resonates. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm speaking to, um, Ego, he, he talks about it back in the day when he was making stuff was like riding a horse that was out of control. Now he's got that <laughs> horse down, you know, the dressage. Okay, you can make it good analogy. moonwalk to the left. My, my horse is on four walkers right now. So. <laughs> Do you feel a similar way? What? Like you're more on top of your craft now than... Um, I mean, how can you get any more on top? Really? Well, yeah, I guess you're just so involved in doing it that... You, you, don't really have a lot of time for the self-doubt and all the questions, you know, you're involved in, your time is spent in the activity. That's good. Yeah. Clear the mind, empty the mind yeah. and do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. The Tower of Larry. <laughs> it's so beautiful, this one. Well, thank you. I get lost in them every time. Cool, cool, yeah. I think that's what music is supposed to do, transport you somewhere. It is, in, but it doesn't uh, always. We yeah, have a yeah, knack for can, it. Uh, well, maybe not every selection over the years, <laughs> but you know, I can maybe have a, a good average. 
two more this over time. Yeah. Do you? Are you? I guess you've already said that you don't really try and direct it. You let it. You let yourself I let it form on its own with you know with me kind of reining it in where I need to or that kind of a thing. Because we just thinking if you were if you were thinking locally when you made them or, or sort of globally like it, it seems like you want to make music that everybody can appreciate it like yeah, yeah i believe with your music i can play it to anybody mm -hmm. and they're okay. gonna go wow you know whereas it's not it's not sort of directly for the club and the dj you know yeah In a sort of um, underground way you know yeah, like Bob marley you want to be to somewhat flexible to fit into different aspects of because i mean Clubs are fun and everything, but clubs are not all day, every day. So something yeah. else is going on the rest of those, out, those hours. And there's other other settings, that, you know, where music fits in. And sometimes bang, bang, bang doesn't really work, you know, no. at a bar, mit bar mitzvah or something <laughs> like that, you know. <laughs> oh, so you make tracks for bar mitzvahs? Uh, not specifically, <laughs> but I wouldn't be opposed to it. I would, I'm always up for a challenge. What would you do? I'm not sure. I just have to get in and, yeah. you know, get my hands on the gear yeah. and just start experimenting. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I do. I experiment. I'd love to hear that. <laughs> Probably wouldn't I'm make any sense you. while it's happening, of course. <laughs> yeah. What do you do to um, tune, tune down? Uh, aside uh, from music. Uh, Get away from music. Yeah. Get away from music. It's some, some documentaries, some history. Oh, yeah? yeah, I'm a big documentaries person. I'm not the biggest TV person, but if there's a documentary, so it's more educational stuff. What do you kind of grabs me? Give me a, a recommend me a, a documentary. Hmm. What have you seen uh, lately? What have I seen lately? Actually, I just watched. I watched the Barry, Barry White documentary with him, so, talking about how he walked. From where he was living, I think maybe Compton. Or, I can't remember where he was living, but he walked to L.A. You know, on foot to kind of go seek out opportunities for his music. I read that in his book. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was amazing. He, yeah. he had his belief in um, not turning his back because you know he yeah. kept going to kind of rescue his yeah. brother from the gang stuff. Yeah. Then he would get drawn in, and then things would go very bad. And he knew mm -hmm. he couldn't turn from the music. The music was the thing that was protecting him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he stayed very. Put okay. his, his wife, basically, his second okay. wife. And I guess for me, wife. yeah, I guess music kept me out of a lot, lot of trouble as well. Yeah. You know, there's just all kind of other things to do when you don't have anything to do. So it can be something that gets you in trouble with the law sometimes, yeah. <laughs> okay, I know this one. Epic. <laughs> Anytime you listen back and you think, no, I would have would have done that a little differently. Uh, not really. Maybe on, not this particular song, but maybe some <laughs> other ones. This one's got to go back and say, well, I wouldn't Flawless. say perfect, but it works. I mean, because it doesn't have to be perfect to work. No. Just like, you know, we're not perfect, but, you know, we got to move along through our lives, you know, despite that. And, you know, despite, you're, you're you know, perfect. Everybody else is uh, not so perfect. Yeah, what will you accept? Exceptional? You won't have genius. Exceptional. Above average. Uh, Okay. Let's say above average. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> if you just want to say something, <laughs> I wouldn't say it. Because, I mean, again, I come up with so many awesome, awesome, awesome musicians that I know how good I'm not. Yeah. Because I've been around people that play the bass like Larry Graham and Stanley Clark and things like that. And yeah. play the drums like Lenny White and Buddy Rich and stuff like that. So I know. Even though I've had challenges, I've entered into challenges I knew I was going to lose, but I still entered into the challenge anyway, just for the sake of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Because we used to have a lot of battles between musicians yeah. there in Chicago. Yeah. yeah. And you were on the drums? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You had the chops? Uh, How yeah, was your paradiddle? I was, yeah, I was kind of doing, I was playing some Neil Peart stuff. I was kind of the Rush cover band guy. Oh, wow. And I had my set kind of set up like his as well, you know. Oh. So that's what I did, the Neil Peart flavor. Do you stay on watching these um, these drum expos, you know, when they come to the show and do the... 
I've never been to one. I just recently <laughs> saw one of the documentaries here about drummers. Yeah. And I, as I was watching it, I was wondering how long is it going to take for Billy Cobham to show up? And within minutes, there he was, you know. So. When I could, again, I could never touch his stuff, but, you know, I definitely, you know, you know, you know, which people to avoid when it's time for a competition. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what to do, though. Yeah, hide there's, out. There's doing enough, there's doing <laughs> just not too much. You know how to not do too much. Just the perfect, you got to be happy. You've got to be happy with it. Yeah, I mean, it, it panned out okay. <laughs> <laughs> With Konopka, is that him? Yeah, Mike Konopka, yeah. He's engineer. a very important part of this, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean learned a lot about engineering from him because, like I told, mentioned earlier, I was kind of working with two cassette decks I had at home, bouncing back and forth to kind of build the layers. And I finally met him through the guys at Gherkin. And, and yeah, he's kind of my, my teacher from that point forward. Yeah. That's another uh, kind of cosmic connection because he would help you. You know, your, your records are very dynamic. A lot of space... Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of separation. Uh -huh. If you didn't yeah. find the right guy to bring that out, yeah. you could have been in trouble. Oh, yeah, big time. Or just been on my own where things just progress a lot slower. Yeah. You know, where there wouldn't be as many selections kind of around now. Yeah. He's listed as Sweetener on uh, one of your records. <laughs> Is he? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> you know, I don't know where some of these uh, kind of. I didn't know that was a term on the Discord. But yeah, sweetener, Brian. Yeah, I had never heard that. Yeah, I just knew. You Mike bring Kanaka. him in sometimes just to just to tweak the frequencies a little bit. Well, not lately. It's no. kind of had his well, hands back full then. with doing everything from Rolling Stones tours to some of everything over the years. So I just hope I learned well and have uh, proved a, a good student. Yeah. Yes. Well, what should we have next? It's up to you. I like space dance. Okay. We go into the Gherkin Jerks era. How old would you have been when you made this? This is 89. I would have been 29. Okay. <laughs> yeah, another one of the, the experiments again. What am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. 
and you just draw from music you've heard you by other people and what have you. It's, it's, I don't I don't know what group this would be inspired by, but Video Clash. I played it early, earlier. Uh, okay. Lil Lewis. Okay. Uh-huh. You remember that one? Uh huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Did that have an effect on you? Did that come after or before? Uh, I think that would have been maybe right around the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we were all kind of in that same camp. This is coming through Gherkin here. Yeah. Yeah. So I uh, ended up being the head advisor for Gherkin as far as the stuff they were signing and putting out. So all right. I was actually the one that approved all the diamond stuff. Including French Kiss, I was like, "Yeah, put it out. Yeah, it's good." Yeah, yeah that kind of artistic, what is it, collective unconscious, where you're hidden in a studio, you think you've made like a world-changing banger, and then find out somebody else has made something extremely similar. <laughs> oh yeah, I was quite that jealous of quite Derek, Derek May when his first EP came out. Because people were asking, if, asking me if it was me. I was like, "No, I wish that was me." But, uh, whoever it is, I got to keep my eye on him. <laughs> You happy with this one? Yeah, yeah, Aww. it's kind of. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not pretty, sure what was going through my good. mind when I did it, but it's very yeah. Space dance is appropriate as far as the title because it's very spacey, otherworldly. Someone's saying, ask about the hip hop stuff. Okay. You want to talk uh, about the hip hop stuff? Well, I wish I had had time. What well, I wish I'd known there was going to be this interview, and I would have kind of oh. put some things together. Will you come you know? again? Because half the stress. Yeah of getting ready for this was the fact that I might never meet you again. Well, we sure Let alone we if it went good at some point. Yeah, we can get back you think? at some point. Yeah, we, I'll be in and out of the UK, I'm sure. Yeah, that'd be great. Over the summer. Yeah. yeah. Take it more easy. Yeah, well, I'll bring yeah. some things, yeah. Yeah, you bring some things. Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Just, it's just very beautiful. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. I, I don't know what to say. I <laughs> appreciate it. Though. I was saying to, to Larry, someone said he's almost infuriatingly too humble. <laughs> and you, you said you could have been cocky if you knew what you were doing, if you had planned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But just not really knowing what you did allows yeah. you to be humble. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's another force then? Something working through you? I'm not exactly sure, but uh, <laughs> just as long as, you know, people are connecting with the, the music and relating to it, you know, and... and yeah, that's that's the key. And you're getting the therapeutic benefits as yeah. well, yeah, which is another thing. That, that's what it is for me. Extremely yeah. therapeutic yeah. for me, Larry, mm-hmm. yeah. personally. Mm-hmm. Helps me. Excellent. Good. Good. Let's have some Disco D. Cool. Who 
us Disco D. Disco D is actually a guy uh, from Chicago, and uh, he, we were trying to um, develop him as a, a lyricist, and, and it just kind of wasn't flowing all that well. And, yeah. I, and I was doing this EP, and I just decided to borrow his name for it. <laughs> 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 With permission, of course. Yeah. Ah, I, was gonna, I thought I was just about to call out <laughs> yeah, there. You're like, yeah. that's not me. Well, we got the, the the concept comes from George Clinton and all his Parliament Funkadelic yeah. Parlette Brides of Funkenstein thing. We were just following that pattern, you know. Did he sell you the name? Uh, no. Is uh, it under license? Uh, no, it's not. It's not. Yeah. I think there's someone else out there called Disco D as well nowadays, so yeah. I'm not going to get into any legal battle or anything, no. <laughs> Tell me about swing. How important is it switching uh, off the quantize button in your studio? Uh, I don't think I ever do switch it off. Oh, really? Yeah. How I may be playing things on top of it real time is what yeah. it is. It may kind of give that, that flavor of it be, not being quantized, yeah. Really? Mm, yeah, I always use to quantize myself, you know. Just simplifies things for me, for, especially as far as editing and all those kind of things that subsequently happen. Yeah. But you weren't you weren't quantized in, in, in bars. You know, you said no. earlier your friends uh -uh. were complaining no, about no, the, I, the 13 I, Like I said, I come from prog rock where we were doing <laughs> crazy sized passages and things like that, and it kind of carried over for quite some time, you know, when I started doing the... the Stuff intended for the dance floors, yeah. some nerdy studio talk what's, what's your favorite synths my favorite synth wow it's, well I, the DX7 stayed with me for a long 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 time yeah. classic yeah, yeah. 
what's your what compressor do you use? Uh, I can't even think of. Yeah, that's the stuff I don't think about because my mind is always kind of on composition yeah. more than yeah technic technical stuff and technological stuff. It's more on kind of. I guess, melodies and grooves and things like that. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess you come to the equipment differently if you're. Do you know some producers work from just tweaking, pushing the equipment. Yeah, yeah. But you come with the the feeling, and then you try yeah. and get the machine. Yeah, I'm more to trying to understand the equipment and understand work with the how song. it operates and what have you, and how it can enhance the song. But I'm more just yeah. my main focus is getting the composition solid uh, you know, you know. do you remember finding a bit of a bit of equipment where you're like oh thank god this is my this this fits in my sound perfectly uh yeah if it's uh, something that's really simple and easy to use yeah that's you remember what it was had, where you uh, the waves l1 yeah uh, maximizer those kind of units yeah. yeah where it's just one knob or one slider it just seems not a whole lot of technical you know adjustments to be made you know just really easy i can keep flowing with my creative thought yeah. as opposing to turning into engineer because that's what yeah. you always have to battle. Patch am phase. I creating or am I doing the engineering yeah. phase of the... and it, Which turns out to be a lot, lot, lot more time, the engineering part. Yeah. So definitely I had to bit. guys like Mike Kanapka where, you know, they love doing it. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm just kind of tolerating it because it has to be done. Yeah. What happened with this track? Why is it only on this comp? Uh, yeah, the, um, Very the guy that they were, Ca Capital was doing this compilation yeah. and I got invited to participate in it. So yeah, that's and you why it's only this? there. Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to see, is this the original version that I did though? Because it may not, is it? Because I know there's one version I did and then there was a version that Tin City came in behind me and did some additional production. This says it's you. Oh, it says mixed by Ten City. Okay, yeah. So this is yeah, not my true original, which is kind of more deeper, more like heavy vibes. You know, Vince Montana. Yeah. It's kind of more oh, of yeah. that mood. The original I did. Can so I maybe have... that was just too deep for the guys at Capitol, you know, who were doing this. You know? Where can I get your version? Uh, I don't even, I have to check, that's one thing I've been trying to make sure I check myself to see if, if it's in my own archives. You know. So you have nothing to do with this one? Well, I did, the, it's my track, and they just mixed it, but smoothed they it did out. some, or, no, mine was smoother. Oh, really? Yeah, theirs is kind of yeah, more, they, they got, they got all that stuff, and I got more, not more flowing kind of a thing going yeah. on with mine. Yeah. Let's chop it then into a very smooth one. You're someone special. Yeah. yeah. See, now this is me just flowing. There's oh. no kind of, even though I'm a drummer, there's no boom ba doom ba doom ba dooms all over the place. No, you know? no. I know what you mean. So we got floaty, yeah. <laughs> Did your love life ever play a play a role in your songwriting well love life or lack of love life you yeah. can both play a role in well, do you remember who this was written for it wasn't written for anyone in, in particular it's just kind of drawn drawn from experience your own and people around you kind of you know yeah share situations you're going through with it's kind of conglomeration of those kind of things is Larry self-taught on the keys yes yeah, we had a piano in the house coming up my whole childhood, so we learned how to play the Adams Family theme song and the Brady oh, yeah. Bunch theme song and <laughs> the Cheerios commercial, and that's what you did. You did simple one-note melodic things, Yeah. and you go to two notes, you go to three notes, and progress from there. You know? And we're, we're, I guess it wasn't a, a day that it happened, but where you, you, you kind of went from that to creating your worlds like they are in these records. Um, Remember where you, you made your first kind of composition? You were like, okay, now I'm feeling... Because, you know, playing other people's music a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some people never think, move on I think from I doing that. I did lyrics first. I think I had kind of these, uh, you know, George Clinton-inspired A-E-I-O-U funk. Yeah. A-E-U-O-Me funk. That kind of stuff. 
<laughs> it was a crazy idea, but that's where I started with lyrics because I hadn't really explored any instruments right up until that point. But you know, once I got some pieces of gear, it was pretty much immediate. You know, I started having ideas. Well, I think that's what um, makes your stuff time because they are pretty much all songs. Mm -hmm. I, and I they try might to be do instrumentals. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's all, there's yeah, you got the range melodic movement that yeah. kind of maybe feels like a, a verse or a chorus or something yeah. like that. What's your favorite chord? I, you know, uh, since I'm self-taught, I can't say that I, <laughs> someone <laughs> who's more knows about theory could answer that. So <laughs> I don't have one. But I, What's your least favorite chord? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Because <laughs> I may not be playing any of them right for all I know. So, uh, I got no, they are all right. They're all perfect. Don't worry about that. To tonally right, but yeah. not technically right. <laughs> <laughs> People are saying it's the minor seventh, Larry. I hear that a lot. But, uh, but uh, and friends, I, I have friends who have masters and doctorates in music, and I have to ask them what key is this song in, because I just don't know. You know? <laughs> it's beautiful. And sometimes they can't tell me. You know? Was that a conscious decision? Because getting schooled up to your ears in music theory can restrict you in a way as well. Well, I mean, could I just, you have made washing machine if you were a strict theoretical uh, musician? No, I'd probably still be somewhere trying to pass a class. But, um, <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah, it just wasn't. Even nowadays, I get pick up books about theory and what have you. You try to absorb it, but nothing's happening. The circle of fifths. I was like, I, I, I know the term, but it's, it's not, not sexy either, is it? <laughs> no, definitely not. It's no. More, yeah seems more like homework than something fun yeah. yeah well you get it where you you know if you're in this day you got the track written but then you're like oh, i don't know how to resolve it and then you leave it and then you come back and you you work out the perfect kind of does that ever happen yeah. or do you get them mostly finished in one session uh no no it's just some things that take like decades really yeah did um like that um empty it appeared on introduction in 91 yeah. Robert, that was one of the first songs uh, Robert and myself wrote together. Oh, wow. But we just, it, we just couldn't find a place for it because everybody was kind of getting accustomed to the bring down the walls, the boom, 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 the club flavor. Ooh, yeah. And this was more of a soul kind of a, or chill out kind of a thing. Which, so it, that's why it just took numerous more years for that one to show up on a, on a project. Can we play Never No More Lonely? Sure, yeah. The piano's come in too late, Larry, and then the track ends. <laughs> what were you thinking? I think, well, I think it was just a last-minute addition. That as it was going, let me just quickly throw this in. Oh, they're so beautiful. It's kind of the same situation like Donnie. With a da -da 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 -da. Yeah, yeah. It was like a last-minute. I showed up at the studio. Yeah. I'm not really supposed to be there, but I just added something that you know, ended up being the sign that signature a lot line of the... Yeah. Because you come, you come in with a fresh perspective, yeah. I guess, and you just kind of... And some amazing guitar solo or yeah, something, something starts while the record is fading out. Mm, yeah. There's yeah. a Prince track like that. Ah, okay. Why you want to treat me so bad or something like that. I think one of okay. the album tracks. Okay. And it just starts getting more and more beautiful as it's fading. Ah, okay. That's what you did on No More Lonely. <laughs> That's what you yeah. did to me.
Larry, I beg you, please talk about the Juno. Juno? I never owned a Juno. Oh. I borrowed one one time. <laughs> But yeah, I never have owned one, so it's only so much I could say. I know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> Roland makes them, right? Yeah. 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 That's why you don't ask about the Juno. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, not the person to ask a lot of technical questions. Yeah. Be clueless. Yeah. They're laughing. <laughs> it's all love. Some business to do, Larry. Uh, yeah, there's always a um, the little your, kind of chores. Your closing to take care of. dimensions. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be big. Bitter, bittersweet, I guess. Yeah. 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 Uh, Have you built a wonderful set for that? Um, chances are there will be transformation to what I've just done at Glastonbury. Right. To. So if you enjoyed that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was great. It was amazing. And yeah. Printworks is your only London show. Yeah, yeah, this year, yeah. When's that? 25th of August. Yeah. That's going to be big. I knew that. That's big. That's a big place. Okay. It's a big place? Okay. It's a big place. It's my first time being there. So You're doing yeah. a live thing in there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's all we're doing these days is the yeah. live thing. There's no, no more DJ stuff for me, you know, just protecting the hearing, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a worry. Yeah. How are the... How are the ears? Okay. They're good. Yeah, as long as I protect them, they're okay. You know, yeah. I just don't... Uh, went through years of playing drums and all oh. that kind of stuff, so I'm, you know, fortunate to have any, so I de definitely want to hold on to what I have, yeah. I'll play yeah. this one quietly. <laughs> Thanks so much, Larry. I think we'll end Thank on this you, one. Man. Thank you Which ends on me. your beautiful piano that's not long enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always these last minute kind of things. I just like on Robert on at the end of Mystery of Love. I mean he could have been at the beginning. Yeah. But we didn't really even think about it until, you know. It adds to the magic. Makes you want to listen to it over yeah, and over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, never give them everything. <laughs> yeah. Right? You know, definitely come from the the world of battles. Yeah, you can't show everything. Thank you so much, Larry Hurd. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's absolutely it. beautiful. Out to Andy LeMay, yeah, Renee from yeah, Black yeah. Market, mm -hmm. original My Black day. Market, mm -hmm. all the crew outside the studio, oh, and you lot out there. Thank you, baby. Thank you, Larry. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. It seems nothing was going my way. I could claim, you see they're around when the mark still remains. I needed someone to know me. I needed someone to show me. I did not have to be all so lonely than you came. Oh, you saved my day. You made me real, you gave me life No more lonely days and empty nights 
Perfect one to end on. It's a perfect one to end on. Yeah, yeah. The sentiments in the lyrics. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be back to see how print works. Yeah, we'll be here. Yeah, good. You saved my day many times, Larry. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Okay, the piano is coming. Thank you, baby. I can jump for joy. I can jump for joy. I can jump for joy. Every time I think about what you do to me, all you say, my day. There it is, Larry. There it is. Don't talk about it too much, but just say, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Okay, thank you so much once again, everybody involved, and Larry, of course. Thank you, Larry. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Oh, we See got you at Printworks. See you at Printworks. Yeah. Much love. Bye, everybody. Bye, do you? 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 Bye, do you?